Hey guys, welcome back to Simple Like Race. It's day here. I know it's been two or three weeks uh, since I posted any videos. I apologize for that. I've been quite busy, and there were the another lockdown happened in my sister uh, in my area, so a bit of hassle there. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you uh, the pros and cons of a sum filtration system. I'll be talking to you about. Um, the, uh, what is the negative and the positive or what is the benefits and all that so those guys who are still uh, confused or still uh, having some doubts to use some filtration compared to any canister or any other filter you want to use this video is for you and before we move to the uh, to the video uh, I would request you guys to subscribe to the channel because uh, look at the analytics below here um, there's only seven or eight percent of you guys are subscribed the rest 92 percent is not subscribed so guys just subscribe to the channel if you don't like the content or what you can always unsubscribe in the future so let's get on to the video okay some filtration so let's get on to it so number one is size so what I mean by size is if you use a some filtration you can make the filtration tank as big as your main tank so example if you can see my system here I'll be showing you around the clock let's go have a look if you can see my system here this is a 400 gallon tank okay and my sump filtration my tank is uh, some tank is about six feet by two by two or 18 inch by 18 inch so as you can see it's huge so that is one size and the next one is uh, it's customizable so what I mean by customizable is the baffles that I uh, divide my media I can choose what size I need to be so here I use K1 uh, filtration so I made it 30 inch for the first compartment so there's no baffles in between so 30 inch of K1 in the first compartment and then I got like 20 inch on the uh, wet media just in case and the rest I left it for the pump compartment okay so it's customizable so I know some filter uh, canister filtration will have a standard fix which you have to follow and uh, this is the positive or the benefits of using a sump and the cons of the size is you need a proper uh, holding area so I know most of you you guys um, have tanks and below under the, under your tanks are placed with something else so there is no enough height no enough height in between here so it's hard to access and you might not have enough place to put your sum tank so that is one size okay another thing under size is the bigger your sum tank is the larger the volume it can hold so you probably need a more powerful tank and remember with some tanks the height between the water the pump level to the tank will be greater so you need to use a lot of a lot more bigger pumps so i've got here is 7000 and 5000 liter per hour pumps so electricity will be increased will increase and your plumbing will, will be more as well so I know it's a bit confusing I did the most plumbing myself the second see is a bit uh, okay uh, or not so okay but I, I'm satisfied with it so you must remember that if you use a sum you will have to be aware of all these uh, scenarios that you have to be you have to need to do plumbing and the pump will be larger than a normal canister which you don't even have to add any extra pump or even a top head filter you need you don't have to use a bigger pump okay and another thing is a uh, some filtration needs an overflow pipe okay that means either you drill your tank or you do a DIY uh, PVC overflow or you can get this uh, hang on box that will bring the water down to your sump so this is a must if you guys want to know more detail on these overflow systems you can check out my video in the links above 
So uh, my overflow system I already shared in another video 400 gallon tank. I'm using a 2 inch uh, overflow system. I'm using a, a Herbie overflow system. So one is a main fully siphon and the another one is um, is a trickle to control the water level in my uh, compartment. I will take you up and show you my uh, overflow compartment now. Okay, so um, this is my uh, overflow uh, compartment, nine by I think nine or ten by six. So if you can see here, this pipe is my emergency or the control uh, water level control in this compartment. So this controls the the height of water in this compartment, not the tank. The tank water level is controlled by these baffles here. Okay, so there is another pipe in there, two inch. I don't think so you can see it. It's uh, six inch or six or ten inch below this water level that does full siphon that means it's fully uh, sunk um, it's it's in the water like you can't see it. so it does 100 percent of the work which this only does probably 10 percent depending on the how much flow that happens so if that pipes get clogged this pipe will take on the other water which also will create a real loud noise that will trigger me to come and check. So all this uh, information you can check on my overflow system. So uh, that pipe, two inch pipe will be controlled by the valve below here. I got two inch valve here. Okay, so this if you want to do a sum system you should have a drill tank. Okay, you should have a drill tank. If you don't have a drill tank, you have two options, DIY, PI, uh, PVC DIY, overflow, or also hang on box. So uh, that is about the preliminary thing that you need to decide, size and plumbing, and of course the pump that you need to use. Okay guys, so now I want to share with you uh, on design. So how do you roughly uh, do a design on this uh, compartment? So basically, uh, if you can see here, I got a two by one by one uh, sump. This is a very standard sump for freshwater tanks. Okay, if salt water will be a bit different because we need a skimmer uh, level. So skimmer means, uh, so that skimmer don't overflow, you need a level that is constant even though the pump is uh, off. Because what happens is when the pump stops, the water level will increase or the water level will reduce when the pump starts. So these baffles here, will control the water level for the compartment. So you can see the water comes in this way, goes in this way and then goes out that way and go out to the pump through plumbing. So it comes in this way. So you, if you can see here, the basic concept of a sum is very important. The water must, okay, comes in one direction, goes up and must return from down. So if you see or you design a sum that the water level is going up, and going up again, even though the level of this thing is here, is going up, whatever biomedia in the center here will be bypassed. That means the water will just go over it, nothing will be processed here. So that's why your sum need to be properly designed. Up, down. If it's down, it has to go up. So it will go through the biomedia here. Okay, you gotta remember. So I'll show you an example on my tank. Okay, first it comes from up. It goes down, it goes up, and because I'm using K1, this filtration level will never, this water level will never change. So when it happens here, I've got this K1 that is moving and mixing with the uh, water and processing it and going down here. See, comes from up and goes down to the next compartment from up and it goes down to the next compartment. You like this, it will go through most of the biomedia and process the water properly. This is very important that we all shouldn't miss. Okay guys, so that is, keep that in mind when you design a sum, it's very important. Very important. Most of the sum makers will know this, but sometimes people do make mistakes, okay? Okay guys, as for maintenance, for my tank, 
it's pretty simple because I usually do routine maintenance for the mechanical system. That means I just clean and uh, replace the socks or the magic uh, carpet or the sponges that I have. And that's it because my water changes is done by automatic. I do a drip system. You guys check out the link above from how I did my uh, very simple uh, drip system. So I'll just show you that most of the maintenance in the sump you must plan properly as well. Always put the mechanical part at a place that you can reach easily because I, you don't want it to be deep inside there in the cabinet somewhere and you can't reach it. So these things we usually do it weekly or bi-weekly or monthly to change this uh, mechanical uh, area. That is for the weekly routine. So the other major routine for some system is basically cleaning off the debris. So it depends on what media you use to clean the debris on the uh, sump is, uh, I will show you here. So you can see I've got this uh, under gravel or under gravel or this uh, egg crate that raises up uh, my biomedia. So whatever smudges you see in there, I'm not sure you can check it out, but there is some dirt. So those dirts can be simply easily removed without removing your biomedia. But I can just put a small hose and do a suction or pull a use a pump and take out take all these smudges away. So that is basically the media. If you don't have these uh, uh, raised equates or under gravel filter, they call this you will have some issue you have to remove and do a lot of work to remove so for k1 there is nothing need to be done it's totally maintenance free uh, and that's the benefit of k1 you can check out on the links above on my k1 filtration how to set up what's the benefits what's the pros and cons all done there okay and uh, that's about it for maintenance it's simple as that um of course uh, if you use a canister, it will be super easy. You can just carry the whole, the whole canister to your bathroom or, or whatever garage or outside the house or garden and just wash it up. But for some, you can't remove it, so we have to make sure it's clean. That's why some some of us use mechanical proper mechanical filtration to make sure no debris comes to the biomedia. But there will be always dead bacteria. Some matter will be there even though from the media the stones the ceramic will be broken down and left there so all about that's all about maintenance for the sound system okay guys so the most important thing you need to know about the sum is how to calculate the last compartment that or the sum size so what is the minimum sum size you need for your tank so basically you stick with one sum size but because of the baffle, okay, just say this is my level of water in my sump. Okay, remember, when you turn off the pump, there will be displacement of water or backflow that will drop in the pump. In this section and also the other section, if, yeah, also this fuse, the sump section. So if you don't have enough place in your sump, the water will overflow so there is a lot of people have flood their their uh, tanks or their some tanks because of this they wrongly designed or they wrongly measured so the what affects this uh, water displacement is your pump uh, water volume so i will teach you here how to uh, basically uh, how to figure out this compartment size okay Okay, so simple as that. Remember, if you got a 400 gallon tank, what you need to know is the length and the width. The length and the width. So you take one inch or half to one inch. So for me, I did one inch. So basically, I the one inch times the length and the width, and you put it in the aquarium calculator. I will add the link below, and you will get a certain um, tank volume so for me like I got 12 gallon or 12 to 15 gallon so what happens is 
this sum needs to be able to handle 12 gallon if the pump goes off. Let me give you an example of that so-called 12 gallon. Okay, have a look. Okay, I'm going to turn off the pump and then you can see. Okay. So this is the backflow that comes. That means those extra water that is above the baffles that is coming in into your sump. So you need to have the ability to handle this, uh, I call it displacement of water. You can see it's going up. I'm, I've got these two compartments to handle this displacement of water without affecting the K1 compartment. So these two compartments to handle. Okay, that's about it. You can see here. This is my maximum level. So after, when you, before you start a sum system, you add as much water as you think the sum can hold. And then you start off your pump. So maximum means after you start off the pump, if the water level is going below the pump system, that means you are using a stronger pump one or your sum cannot handle the displacement so you can reduce the pump capacity reduce it that's the only way because you can't change the size you've already added it so that is one way so this is damn important guys you have to remember that so i'll be owning the sum back Okay, so this is what happens, you're on the sun back. So now you can see, it goes up, it will stop here at this, this line here. This is actually my drain system, which I actually turn it off because I will show you the example. Okay, so that's about it guys. So this is a very important part you guys need to understand. If you do it wrong, then you might flood your, your, flood your house. So that is one. One more thing, we also have to think of evaporation. Every three or four days, the water will go low. Some system will have is evaporation issue. If you're using a top filter, I wouldn't call it a top sump tank. Some are usually underground fed by gravity so above or even if canister you will not have that issue but with some you will have that issue so be in mind to top off your water with dechlorinated water every three or four days usually so you must be ready for that and lastly if a sump is in the enclosed area you will have humidity issue if, there is, if this area is not ventilated like I used to have mold in my some and mold bugs and all they are not dangerous they're harmless but just ugly mold green mold growing everywhere so once i start adding ventilation or you know, opening the door once in a while giving the place to ventilate itself the problem solved so these are all the things i can share with you the pros and the cons of some system i hope you guys uh, i hope it helps you guys and uh, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, comment or ask me anything you want about this uh, sump filtration system. And uh, don't forget also subscribe. There's only 7-8% of you guys actually subscribe, the rest of you. Uh, thank you very much for watching, but the rest of you, if you can subscribe, that would be really great. Thank you very much. We'll catch you in the next video. The next video is something that I've been, I will do. I've been saying it for a long time, almost every video every video i posted so um it's something to do with my arona so stay tuned and see you guys next week